looking at $800 million, the March of Dimes again in a different kind of way? What is it? Well, I, I honestly believe that um, what Franklin Roosevelt and the March of Dimes were about was challenging the American people and inclusion and that everyone was involved. And the Gates Foundation has come in now at a time when we are close to the finish line, but we've been close to the finish line for a while. And they have the strategy and the knowledge to push us forward. But I often thought that FDR had birthday balls and celebrities. And there's a new technology out there. This man knows quite a bit about it with uh, cell phones and the internet and the like. And I was wondering whether it would be possible to challenge the children of the world, the parents of the world, to also try to give money for this final push. I mean, in the United States, when the Salk vaccine was determined to be safe and effective, this country celebrated in a way that was absolutely extraordinary. We were let out of school, church bells tolled, factory whistles went off, people were hugging each other in the street. It was the beginning of the end. Jonas Salk was brought to the Rose Garden. And for the first time in anyone's memory, Dwight Eisenhower broke down in tears as he thanked Salk and other scientists for saving the children of America. And what I did as well, a Republican president taking the line from the Democratic New Deal of Franklin Roosevelt, Ike said, this is not America's vaccine. This is the world's vaccine. This is for the children of the world. And I have often thought that the one element that is now missing in this extraordinary push from Rotary and, and, and CDC and the WHO, and now the, the, the incredible, thoughtful power of the Gates Foundation is to involve grassroots people throughout the world to help with that final push. And Bill, I'm sure there are people in that, that oddly contradictory way who will say, well, the Gates Foundation will just take care of this, yeah. right? They can just give that money so they don't need us to go out with our dimes again. Well, we, we can fund about 15% uh, of it. And so we need uh, a lot of participants Getting the word out, I mean, this is one where the awareness has just dropped dramatically, yes. whether it's polio or uh, the magic work of UNICEF in, in getting vaccines out. And so we need to have a renaissance. Um, you know, maybe it's ironic that we're doing it at a time when it might be hard to do it, but it's such a powerful story. And the impact it has on these countries where you improve childhood health is a a phenomenal story. It's not just saving lives. The kind of sickness that kids endure uh, when families have uh, healthy children, they end up uh, not having as many children. And so all the problems of feeding and educating and stability, the environment, they all come down to a commitment really to these, these health issues. So um, uh, we need to do some more grassroots things, but we also need the government part to stay strong. Uh, this is a, a time when uh, that's, that's a, uh, under attack. The government commitment, financial the aid, aid, government aid foreign money aid that uh, supports global health activities. I want to throw it open to questions from the floor, and I'm going to start with Mr. Pluta from the Rotary. Thank you. Leave this on. Thank you, and good morning. My name is Ed Futa, and I represent uh, Rotary International. My question is to Dr. Ciro de Cuadras. We remember working with you in the early days of the polio eradication effort in the Americas, and it's good to see you here today. As you know, Rotary started its fight to eradicate polio in 1985. Our 1.2 million members have contributed more than $1 billion and countless volunteer hours to get to this critical point. My question is, given your role in smallpox eradication and in declaring the Americas polio free, what do you see as the broad implications of polio eradication? What does this massive global effort 
put in place that will be our lasting legacy to the world. Thank you for your question. And I fondly remember Carlos Canseco, who was then Rotary president when uh, Rotary really went global with this fantastic initiative. And uh, I used to say that uh, without Rotary, we'd not be here today. Uh, I think that the legacy of polio eradication, uh, let's say we have to think first that we are not going to see any more any paralyzed children. And I think this has a tremendous, will have a tremendous impact in the economy of those countries that suffer polio today because there will be no more paralytic beggars in the street because they suffered polio. So those will be productive members of society. And I think that's something that sometimes we forget. The other point that is very important is this creation of this culture of prevention, as I mentioned before, and the more stronger health infrastructure that can deliver not only vaccines, but other health uh, uh, interventions. So I think that that's, uh, you cannot measure that. And uh, no economist can really put that into the table and see how much that will, will cost. So is it is a, is a tremendous impact. And uh, smallpox had a tremendous impact by creating a cadre of epidemiologists, by improving health uh, uh, services in many countries. And I think that probably because of the characteristic of the disease and the characteristic of the program, because it needs more intensive campaigns and social communication and so on, will have even a bigger impact. Another question. Yes. And as I said, to close it, Itzhak Perlman is here. Oh, uh, I agree with everything that I've heard. I, I, I would like to just say one thing which is probably a re repetition, which is uh, two letters, uh, PR. And I think that, I know that everybody here is just assumes that you know we know all about it, but I think that there is a kind of PR with the intensity that is needed. And you know, it's the, the ABC, NBC, CNN, MSNBC, all, all the stations, you know, it's interesting that when you hear of a football player or a baseball player who's injured, everybody knows about it in a certain way. And I don't think this is yet that kind of intensity to eradicate polio. I, I think that it's still uh, uh, limited in certain ways. And I think that, I think the news media can do a lot. I mean, we're talking about money, that's of course obvious. But I think the intensity of the news media uh, to, to really uh, let everybody know what the problem is, is very, very necessary. And I think that would help. And? Yeah, but, uh, you know, and, and, I also, and I also feel that I might as well do a little bit of an, my own agenda <laughs> in this situation, <laughs> which is to provide more access to people with disabilities. I think this, there's a lot of stuff that goes on there which needs to be improved, you know? I mean, we, we hear about the Americans with Disabilities Act, it's not enough. So that, that's needed as well. Well, again, I thank you all for being here. I believe FDR said to Winston Churchill, it's great to be in the same decade with you. It would be <laughs> great to be in the same decade that we see an end of polio. Thank you. The decade of the vaccine.